Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to show you how to sort of get started on your midterm, uh, prepare for it, and um, some things that I recommend doing. So what we've learned so far is how to import image planes, we've learned extrude, um, let's see what else have we covered up to this point. Um, Multi-cut tool, uh, combine objects, um, merge verts, um, and some other things. So I'm going to try and stay in that range because uh, I don't want to get too far ahead uh, from where we're at at this moment. So um, like I said, I want to import an image plane first. So I'm going to start by uh, checking out some something I'd like to include in my scene. And I thought doing a, a since I we were doing this sort of medieval times theme, I can include a dungeon torch in there, right? I thought that might be a pretty cool object. So I found this really great example. Um, this one actually has, when we get into texturing, this left side of this image will make you know a lot more sense. Um, but what it is is it has uh, the UVs of this for texturing uh, on the left hand side of this example and then it actually has the model on display here in the right hand side and we get to this pretty shortly so um, we're not going to cover unwrapping but just to sort of give you a heads up and foreshadow into what we'll be doing in the future here sh very shortly um, and this little dungeon torch is broken down into a couple of different objects it looks like one object down here that goes into the wall as would be one object the torch base itself is another. This one going into the wall, which is sort of like the torch, you know, holder. Uh, maybe a little bolt here. These are probably separate objects. And then each one of these little spigots with the brace uh, circling around are probably additional separate objects. And it looks like it even may have something here. It has this little render here uh, on the right hand side. And we get into rendering also. Um, and that's just the object itself and it has the texture applied to it and this is sort of what it looks like in this 3D uh, environment um, with no texture on it so we're, our goal is to sort of get something similar to this now um, since you're just beginning you know how to import image planes so save out a good reference that you'd like to model and then import the image plane and I strongly recommend trying to get like a front or side or if you can find a front end side of a, some type of image plane uh, some concept art um, that you can find uh, and you know always try to make sure it's copyright free uh, pixabay is a pixabay.com is a website that has free images copyright free and there's others out there and I know you can find them so anyway I'm gonna just sort of do my own take on this so I'm not gonna import the image plane uh, for this, but um, I'm just going to cover some techniques that might help us sort of get started going into this. So I'm going to start by creating a, uh, not a sphere, excuse me, a, a polycylinder. And with my polycylinder, I'm going to adjust this to 8 because I, I really like the number of uh, sides it has. It's not too many polys to work with and it makes it much easier to model with. So I'm going to just sort of scale this a little bit bigger and a little bit thinner something like that and I can always again scale and make adjustments to this later but um, I'm gonna go into face and I'm gonna highlight all of these and then sh holding shift deselect these at the bottom and then just I'm just deleting the cap there now now that I've got that uh, kinda cleaned up I'm gonna start to create the torch where the torch base would be where the flame spickers out right so I'm going to hold right click and go into edge mode and I'm just going to double click this edge and then I'm going to do an extrude and I'm going to just extrude this out from the center and I'm going to bring it up there we go and tapping F on my keyboard can always allow me to quickly zoom in on my object and allow me to easily rotate my camera around or pan or whatever so now that I've got to here I'm just going to tap G for last tool used and tap W to uh, use my move tool again and I'm just gonna do this about three times until I feel like I got a pretty good sort of start for it so now that I've got sort of this uh, holder base at the top I wanna create the interior of it because these normals are, are not good so 
um, basically what I need to do is close this object off. So I'm going to hold right click again, I'm going to switch into my edge mode, and I'm just going to extrude again inward, tapping R to scale in this time. And then I'm just going to create this sort of lip here, and now I'm going to tap G and extrude and sort of follow the same process I did to create it, except extruding inward and down to sort of get this cupped in base here. And maybe one more time. So something like that, right? And now with this, this might be new up to this point. I'm going to fill this hole. And a really fast, easy way to do that is hold shift with, make sure your edges are all selected, hold shift and right click, and then just go down here to fill hole. Now with that being said, it's not an, um, closed in, it's not a quad or a triangle, because that's important. We cover that in the before you begin on topology. So I'm going to hold right click, go to face, click on the center face, right? Now I'm going to hold shift and right click, and I'm going to go to poke face. And it's just going to basically triangulate that at the center point and create sort of like a capped off area, just as we have at the bottom of our cylinder here. So now that I've got that done, I'm going to go ahead and start to create the other part of this, the bottom. And then I'm going to go to my edge and or my vertice. I'm going to switch to my vertex mode. And I'm just going to bring this down a little bit. But at the same time, I'm going to go ahead and highlight all the verts at the bottom. There's not many there. And I'm just going to tap R and scale this in. Because it looks like they all sort of have this uh, angular shape going up towards the base. Okay. So now that I've got that down, I'm going to go ahead and try and figure out what would be the best way to sort of create uh, this center piece here uh, with those spigots. Now I already know and have a really strong idea of how I would create it. And what I think I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a, uh, I guess a poly cube. This, this way I'll keep my poly count low. And I'm just going to create the cube up. Now I'm going to tap R. And I'm going to scale this inward and just bring it in. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring that up. And I'm going to just drag it sort of as close as I can to the center here, right, of this mesh. Now I'm going to show you a really good trick. I'm going to turn shading and wireframe on shaded on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this in a number of different objects. And I'm going to hold D and hold V. And this adjusts the pivot point. And I'm going to just, by holding D and V, holding D uh, turns on adjust pivot point. Holding V will snap. So now that I've snapped my pivot point to the center piece, I want to show you what I'm going to be able to do here. So I can just sort of, oh, I should be able to sort of just rotate this around. And I might not have it in a good enough spot. So it looks like I'll only be able to kind of create this in certain areas. But you get the idea. It sort of wraps around very easily. So you can see how that does that. Now I'm going to bring it back to my starting point. Okay. And f with my pivot point here in the center, this is a really cool trick. It makes modeling so much easier when doing an object like this. If I tap Shift D and now I rotate, Shift D is Edit, Duplicate, with Transform, Shift D, Edit, Duplicate, with Transform. And what this does is I'm going to rotate just around this axis, and I'm going to just place it sort of right here. Right Now I'm going to tap Shift D again, and it's going to retain that information all the way around. So the one thing that I, have no I can take note on is that my angles are not exact. But if I do it twice all the way around, now I've got every one of these objects sort of perfectly uh, uh, in circumference around this diameter here, this radius here, 
uh, around this object, but in some spots it bleeds through. So the easiest way to fix that is I'm going to select all of them, okay? And I'm going to go to Combine. This is something we've covered. And I'm going to tap R, and I'm just going to scale them in. And now they sort of all just fit right in there. So I've created this shape, um, and I've got my little brackets here. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I could create a polytorus and just sort of bring this up and you know scale it and play around with my whoop, attributes in here and give it a really cool I want to make it 8 and maybe my subdivisions it will be 8 and then uh, I don't want any twist to it but my radius I could mess around with and my sectional radius here I could play around with and I could get it to look you know it's a little jumpy so I'd have to probably type this in stuff like this and one maybe and then I could get like and maybe scale it just a little bit bigger and now I have this sort of torch and this is totally totally fine um, this is actually a really great way to start this I could even bring this down to four Oh, no, this needs to be 8. I could bring... Mm, maybe if I brought this down lower. Down to 4. Eh, let's see, 8. Eight's a little bit better. And I could do something like this, and now I'd have my cool little spin on my torch. And maybe I want this radius to be smaller. And eh, maybe a little bit bigger. And because it's just such a sent, these are such small numbers it's dealing with. I, I really need to play around and be a little bit aware of something like that. And I think that's actually a really good start for my torch, giving it my own little twist. So it's got this sort of rounded part here at the top, as well as these here. And if I really wanted to get a little bit more intricate. I just scale and resize these a little bit and it has those little top parts sticking out as in our reference over here has these little top parts sticking out now I, I could add in like these little angular parts but for what it is I think it's good so now I can turn off my shading and wireframe on shaded just to give you a quick look see and I've got these sort of cool little this cool little uh, beginning of my torch. So the other thing I want to do is I'm going to create the little ring around it. And if you notice a lot of these torches here, they all have this sort of, you know, some kind of base holding it um, against a wall with some type of, you know, bracket or you know, this one's got these two little uh, cylinders here that would mount to a wall and they all sort of have the same unique features this one's braced a little bit differently this one has this really unique design to it and I'm not gonna get this intricate with some kind of s-shaped design but something like this is pretty simple it's just a cylinder with some extrusions and I'll go ahead and go back into Maya and now in here I'll go ahead and create some type of base. So um, I can do this. Let me see if I can do it in here. Create polygons. Do, 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 do. Not really. So I wanted this one to be a little bit more squarish. So instead of using the polytorus this time, or a little bit flatter, if, if you will, I'm going to create a cylinder. I'm going to scale this down and I'll just drag this off just so you can see what I'm doing and as a matter of fact if you were to just keep it sort of like this right and then let's just say grab these faces and extrude out that would be totally acceptable you know what I mean so you'll have your and I can make it a little bit smaller and you'll have this being uh, with the ability to mount to a wall 
And then I could do basically the same thing. I'll just duplicate this one by pressing Control D. Control D. And I'll just zoom in down here. And maybe this one's a little bit thicker at the bottom. And actually, maybe not. Maybe it's more so like so. Maybe it holds it in place right here, right? I'll bring it thinner. And then I'm just going to go ahead and grab these vertices and bring them back. And oop. I'm going to hold V and just use my, and just grab it here. And now I know that both of these actually line directly up. And I think that's pretty good. And the last thing I can do is just so I have some type of bracket to mount, like wall mount to bra uh, brace this to. I'll just create something like that. And then just so I have little bolts, I'm going to go here. And I'll change this to 6. I think 6 is pretty good. And we'll make it smaller. And now bring this over. And I'll just actually create this. I'm going to just holding V snap this here and I want to rotate it around and I'm just going to create two bolts on this. I could do one in each corner but I think this will just get the point across. And now I'll bring this down and then I'll press control D and bring this down. And now I've got and I could even put one in the center, which might even be a good idea, but I think that's fine. So you can see that now I've got sort of like these bolts holding this in place. And if I want to, on this object, uh, just a quick little trick. I, I don't know if I've covered this yet or not, but I definitely do at some point uh, very shortly if I haven't done it already. If you hold shift and right click and go soften edge and soften edge, you get a much softer look on this. The other ones I would like, this one I want to be a soften edge, soften edge, soften edge. And now I've kind of got this unique little torch. And the rest of the uh, edges I want to be hard edges. So I think that's a pretty good start to this. And I'm going to leave it as is. I think that that'll work really well uh, in my Medieval Times uh, themed room. So I've got a little dungeon torch now that I can add to my scene. Um, which I can basically use to simulate where the light's coming from if I like and things like that. So um, anyway, you can choose any object you'd like. Uh, you can follow along with this torch if you'd like, and we will get into texturing it soon. But just to get started on a model, find something you'd like to model for the midterm because we're going to have uh, a few extra models on top of what we have in the labs. Um, be sure to check the requirements. Um, I have a link in the Canvas shell on here um, so be sure to check that out um, and just shoot me a message if you have any questions about it but um, just try and get a head start on it and this way you're not overwhelmed uh, by the time midterms roll around um, because you will also have other classes I'm sure with uh, midterms that you're gonna have to study for and stuff and this way it'll free up time for you to go ahead and study more on uh, you know those midterm tests where this is a midterm project so um, you'll be able to uh, you know work around it and not be so overwhelmed but anyway um, thanks for watching if you have any questions be sure to shoot me a message and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video